Smile 2 is written and directed by Parker Finn. It is a psychological horror film that is a sequel to the 2022 hit Smile. And it kind of tells the story of the character of Sky Riley, who is played by Naomi Scott, who is a pop star who begins to experience kind of increasing weird things happening to her in her life. The movie runs for 127 minutes long. It's a bit kind of longer than the first film, which was 115 minutes long. Now, let me just say, when you have a sequel to a an original idea, and then you work off of that, it's really interesting. Can it be better? Will it be better? Because you know, horror sequels and sequels for that matter are never good. But this is where it shifts in the genre. Smile 2 is absolutely far superior than the first movie by a trajectory of unimaginable bounds, and I mean that with great extent. Parker Finn took the time and definitely wrote and directed a phenomenal horror sequel, and Naomi Scott as Sky Riley really harbors that character so well as this pop star who's loving the fame and fortune and then you see the downside of it as well which is really really kind of you know uh, picked on a lot not only that the character that kyle gallner plays joel the police officer who is cursed with this smile entity from the end of the first movie does show up in this and we go deeper into the lore of this so-called smile monster what it is, where it began, where it started, what the aspect is. There are gruesome, gory scenes in this that is done perfectly, and it's not over the top. It's not body horror where you think, oh, this is your normal kind of terrifier franchise movies. It's none of that at all. This is more interesting, mundane. It picks the mold of kind of the psychological aspect of a supernatural being of if someone's just smiling at you, what is it? There are some creepy aspects of how people smile in this. And not only that, Ray Nicholson, the son of Jack Nicholson, is in this as well. He plays Paul, who is kind of a deceased actor and Sky's former boyfriend. There is a whole story in that as well. The story is fleshed out a little bit more better than the first film. Uh, the first film had some interesting, shocking moments. Of course, we know by the trailers and the film we watched, but it was a slow pace. It was slow going. Didn't get to the point. But this second film really nails the timing really well. I thought as I'm watching it, it's going to be long. It's going to be boring. It's going to be dragged out. It keeps your attention. It keeps your gaze from the first scene up until the very ending of this movie. Now, I'm not a huge fan of jump scares because they're just there to fright you or scare you. But my goodness, the jump scares in this really get you. It's very unexpected to where you're so enamored with the film and what's going on with these characters and how the aspect of the smile is. The uneasiness you get when you watch this film and all of a sudden, bam, there's a jump scare. And then, okay, when's the other one? And then you get into the film again. Boom, there's another one. And it's just so well done. The aspect and the depth of focus that these characters give and deliver, especially Naomi Scott, who probably has given a award-winning performance. Sadly, she won't get nominated for any awards for this role, which she should. But, I mean, after seeing her and what she did in the Power Rangers movie and more so Aladdin, I'm happy to see her do something like this to get out of her comfort zone. I feel like this will put her back on top of the A-list of Hollywood actors and actresses. And even so, being the new horror scream queen that everyone knows and loves, especially for this, it's an interesting take on what's happening and what's going on. Not only are the jump scares there, the cinematography is substantially beautiful. Uh, filmmakers will see this and go like, okay, this is very different than what you saw in the first movie. The first movie had certain things, certain aspects. You see the behind the scenes making of that. Then you know it's like, oh, this is practical effects. In this one, you really can't tell what's practical and what's CGI. But it's done in a way where it's like, oh, okay, a pop star is stricken with this kind of smile curse entity whatever it is and we know how it goes and what has to happen in order to get rid of it it's crazy and the ending is even more so weirder but it gets to a point where it's like you go into it knowing that okay the first one was there all right it's an original concept it's good you smile you're scared but it's a curse that has to pass on you have to do things someone wants to figure out how to get rid of it 
In this one, it's like, okay, we know it's there, and now it's been two years or so forth, and it's like, what is really going to happen? What is the mold? How does everything progress? For this to be a two-hour-plus horror film that really captures you from the start is very different, and I really had fun with this. I was going into being like, all right, a sequel, all right, they're just going to dish it out like the Saw movies or any other horror big franchise that's happened in the past 50 years. But no, I feel like if you do this, and maybe Smile 3, if done right, get Parker Finn to write and direct it, and then close it out and just go on from there or do some spin-offs, it'll work really, really well. I had a blast with this. It's fun. Go see it for the acting, for the scares, and the psychological, supernatural aspect of it's really, really different than what you thought the first film could be, and even better. For me, Smile 2 gets 5 out of 5 stars. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about Smile 2. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? What did you think about the aspect of the story, the scares, the writing, the directing? How did you think Naomi Scott did as the pop star Sky Riley? Do you think that this is her best performance? Do you think it's award-winning? And do you think that, you know, we'll see more Smile movies? And which is your favorite? Smile or Smile 2? So let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked. I'm Mr. Filmstock. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next review video.